G'day everyone, my name is Cautious Pancake and today let's talk about my top 5 bases for Alpha 21 and the two different ways that I'm ranking them. As there's been an influx of new subscribers to the channel since Alpha 21, firstly let me say welcome and I hope you are enjoying both playing Alpha 21 and watching all of the entertaining content that the community is putting out there. For long term viewers, you'll know that in Alpha 20, I started the process of trying to work out how to evaluate Horde bases and what criteria should be used, and I got a ton of useful feedback from you all in the comments. This first part of the video is going to talk about how that's all been pulled together and the theory behind how I'll be evaluating my bases for this Alpha. If that's not your cup of tea, I've marked chapters below for you to skip around, but the rankings will make more sense after the theory, at least I hope so. For those of you who are still here, thank you for indulging me, but more importantly, I hope this is a useful approach to use when talking about bases. I've settled on two values for ranking bases. The first is the simplest, but also the most meaningful for some people, and that's the raw XP gain for the Horde Knight. I'll go over the Horde Knight settings later in the video, but for now, this value is just to measure how many zombies we can kill and how much XP we can get for it. Remembering that adding traps will always increase the number of zombies killed, but reduce the amount of XP we can gain for them so it's often a balance. This value is designed to help those that are focused on leveling as fast as possible to find the endgame horde base design that is going to provide the maximum potential. The second ranking number is an overall efficiency score of the base, designed to provide the approximate XP gain per resource cost over 5 horde knights. This value should give an indication on how much time and effort will be spent on acquiring ammunition, base building materials and repair time against the XP gained so that a base that provides moderate XP gain can still get an excellent score here should it be a cheap base to build and repair and makes effective and efficient use of ammunition. The overall calculation for the efficiency score is 5 times the experience gain divided by the sum of the build cost, 5 times the ammunition cost and 5 times the repair cost. The build cost is only included once since you should only have to build the base the first time and restoring it to its pristine condition post Horde Knight is covered in the repair cost. The method for determining cost is the next important factor to discuss. After various discussions from the last video on what method should be used, and many people recommended using trader cost as the basis, I have decided not to take that path, simply because, as Alpha 21 is patched, these values may well change, and are more based around how much money the player will accumulate to use and purchase gear, rather than necessarily how hard it is to acquire the materials. That being said, there's merit in both ways, so please call out any significant factors that differ between this and my approach, which is to effectively assign all base resources a cost of one point. So stone, wood, iron, plastic, nitrate, brass, etc. will all cost one point. Some particular materials that are acquired and can't be built or assembled are also assigned a basic point value. For example, headlights, electric parts, mechanical parts, and springs are assigned 10 points. And with the change to water in Alpha 21, I've had to assign an arbitrary value there as well, which I've given 20 points. To avoid this video getting too long, I won't go through how to make all the calculations here, as it's not changed from the previous video. See the link in the description if you're keen to know more, but in essence, using the recipes for items, we can determine the base components used, and from there, calculate the cost for everything from a wood block to a shotgun turret. Then, with the cost of all items being able to be calculated, this approach can be used for determining the repair, ammo and build costs for each base build and horde knight. One important additional factor to include is the base build cost for digging out dirt and stone. I've allocated a cost of 10 for digging dirt and 50 for digging stone and ore. This is so that dig heavy bases that cost a bunch of time and effort to build don't look disproportionately cheap when comparing to above ground bases. Oh, and I should note, that lighting costs are not included, as I typically include more lighting than is usually needed for recording purposes. The last item to cover in the theory section is the settings that I'm using for Horde Knight. This hasn't significantly changed, but to recap, the difficulty is set to insane, number of zombies 64, and the zombie run speed during the Horde is set to Nightmare. I'll be using a player level of 113 on day 119 or anywhere above there, the biome will now have to be the forest, as Alpha 21 has introduced new biome bonuses, which means that to get the game stage we need, which is 271, we need to only test there. 271 is the game stage that we're using because it provides a good range of zombies, including a dog and cop heavy first wave, fairly standard second wave, and a cop and demo heavy third wave to finish. This is also functionally equivalent to any max game stage horde, just with slightly fewer zombies per wave at 368 instead of the maximum of 500. But given that I'm yet to be able to finish a wave early, that's not been an issue so far. 
What has changed, obviously, with Alpha 21 is the skills system. With the removal of sex recs in particular, as well as other changes, there's now a new default loadout that is still designed to use most of the points in skills that are generally useful during playthrough, so that it's not a lopsided combat heavy build with no utility skills. These might not be the exact skills that you want to play with, but I don't think they are unreasonable to have. The standard skill loadout looks like this. All stat attributes are set to 7, Lucky Looter to 2, Salvage Operations 5, either Heavy or Light Armor to 4, Minor 69er and Mother Load both to 5, Pain Tolerance to 4, Run and Gun 3, Hidden Strike and From the Shadows to 4 each, and Physician 2 points. This then leaves 34 points, as no tutorial points are allowed, for use to build the combat skills. I allow a maximum of 7 books, preferably from a single set, and must not include the Night Stalker book that gives the bonus to XP gain at night time. For clothing, no stat boosting goggles or cigars are allowed, candy and recog is allowed, and any and all armor and weapon mods are allowed. Typically I don't bother much with the armor, but will generally include a bando mod for a reload heavy base. Okay, that's the theory done. Now it's time to go through the top five. Starting at number five is the Plinko base. While it's super fun to watch the zombies cartwheel down the Plinko board, then run down the sideshow themed rows while being peppered by dart traps, this base doesn't perform particularly well when it comes to either XP or efficiency. From an XP perspective, it delivers a touch over 400,000 XP, and in the efficiency stakes, we have a base cost of just over 200,000, an ammo cost of around 54,000, and a repair cost of 1,500, combining to form a pretty low efficiency score of 4.2, mostly due to the high initial build cost and relatively high ammo cost, which is mostly coming from the dart traps. This base though does have a high resistance to explosions, as a cop or demo blowing up has little impact on the base design. Moving on to number four, we have the Thresher base. This blade trap heavy, ugly block base is one of my oldest builds, but it can still hold its own in Alpha 21, with a small modification to add in a quartet of dart traps down the main corridor. The XP gain when running with maxed out advanced engineering was 536,000. For this base, the initial build cost was 86,000, the ammo cost per horde is 21,500, and the repair cost is 27,500, which is horrible due to lost blocks, lost blade traps, and dart traps. However, this still comes out with an efficiency score almost double of the Plinko base at 8.1 due to the much lower base and ammo costs. This base has a medium explosion rating as while the base and pathing stands up well to explosions, any Copton demos blowing up will often take out a blade or dart trap, reducing the effectiveness of the base. In third place, we have the unclimbable ladder base. This industrial looking ladder base uses four alternate ladders to provide redundancy and the unclimbable ladder technique to ensure that no zombies make it to the top, allowing you to focus on taking out zombies all night long. The XP gain is slightly higher than the Thresher base at 567,000. The base cost, ammo cost and repair cost combine to give an efficiency score of 6.7 and the base has a high explosion resistance rating due to the multiple ladders and pathing options. The runner-up for my top 5 bases is the most recent, my smallest base that fits within a 5x5x4 area. Packing a punch despite its small size, this is an unforgiving base for mistakes and requires proactive loot bag management to not get buried. However, it is the winner for overall XP gain at just a tick under 778,000 XP, a whopping 210,000 increase over third spot. The base cost is small as well overall due to the size restriction at 13,000. Ammo costs though are fairly high at 66.5 and repair costs are very low at 800 for a run that is successful. This generates an efficiency score of 11.1 but as mentioned the explosion rating is very low as almost any explosion will destroy a critical component. And for my top number one base this position goes to my 3x3 explosive pit challenge base or at least a slightly modified version of it. This version adds three blocks outside the 3x3 limit, providing a small ramp in and has rearranged the floating blocks at the entrance into a more protected column to prevent most of the cop spit, at least until they're in the bottom of the pit. The XP gain for this base is slightly lower than the number two slot at 721,000, but what makes this base the overall winner is the efficiency score. This base has an initial build cost of 9,500 which is even lower than the previous, as this base does not include any traps. 
It has an ammo cost of 9,300, which is around 15% of the cost of the smaller space, and this was achieved through primarily using pipe bombs. Throwing two pipe bombs at a time would typically kill most zombies and give around 15,000 XP, which was excellent for some of the cheapest ammo around. And while the repair cost of around 12,000 might look high, this is for the first run of the base, where a lot of dirt and stone blocks were destroyed by exploding cops and demos, and had to be replaced with cobblestone blocks, which has twice the HP of the blocks it was replacing, so future runs will have a lower repair cost than the one I've used, which is the worst case. Combining these values gives an efficiency score of 31.2, almost three times better than the next best base. It also has a very high explosion rating, as the zombies don't take any damage until they are in the pit, and once in the pit, any explosion only digs the pit further down, and doesn't cause any significant damage to the base or its efficiency. So with the number 2 experience gain, a dominant efficiency score, and a top explosion resistance rating, this base is the number 1. So far, at least. So what do you think? Do you agree with this approach, or think it's missing something significant? And what do you think of how I've applied it for ranking? Should the smallest base have been number one due to the larger XP gain, or is there merit in combining each of the scores? Please let me know what you think in the comments below, and if there are any other bases you think I should rate to see if they could take over the number one spot. From here, I am keen to try and build new designs that can take over number one, but I suspect it's going to be a challenge. Hopefully this has been interesting for you, and if so, please hit the like button so that this video can get a bit of a boost. And if you'd like to see more Horde based videos, please subscribe and come back for the next one. As always, thanks for watching and happy building.